Well, by now, most of us have at least a passing knowledge of the QAnon uh, curious Republican congresswoman from Georgia. But it's a mistake to think she's on an island in her beliefs. Around the country, in local, state, and national races, QAnon supporters have not only attracted attention, they've gained power. And more of the conspiracy theory believers are on the ballot in races this fall. CNN Sir Seidner tonight has an in-depth report. I'll keep speaking on Q. I'll keep speaking on the truth. From a world champion ultimate fighter turned mayor pro tem. This hang all these mother that's what I'm talking about. To a school board member with a curious take on climate science. This uh, adherence that you have to believe scientists is more of like a religious cult. To a state representative pushing a deep state conspiracy. There's a lot of people involved in, in a pedophile network and the distribution of children. QAnon conspiracy embracing candidates are now making headway in local, state, and national races across America. Are there more candidates or fewer candidates that have latched on to the QAnon conspiracy theories? There's a higher rate of candidates embracing QAnon uh, and its tenants now than there was last cycle, at least at this point. Angelo Curason with the liberal watchdog group Media Matters tracks QAnon's political clout. He says their research shows the January 6th insurrection didn't kill the Q conspiracy. It's emboldened it by broadening the movement. So far, the group says for the 2022 races, 19 congressional candidates, 18 of whom are Republicans, have shown support for QAnon conspiracies. We're at the beginning of this, not the end. A large reason why it has such political power um, is not just because QAnon adherents are very energized and so they're a good go-to for politics, but they donate. They give money. QAnon's core outlandish tenet is President Trump is the chosen one to save America from a shadowy group of politicians, media members, and Hollywood stars who run a worldwide child sex trafficking ring so they can drink the children's blood for energy. So the real threat of all of this isn't so much, you know, that it's some wacky ideas. It's that it is a call to arms. Case in point, listen to Arizona State Representative Mark Fincham. There's a lot of people involved in, in a pedophile network and the distribution of children. And unfortunately, there's a whole lot of elected officials that are involved in that. Well, um, I, I shouldn't be shocked at that, but uh, that, that is shocking. The conservative news anchor may not have challenged him, but some of his constituents have. They were also shocked by this tweet he sent on January 6th while he was outside the Capitol, showing support for the big lie, the claim the 2020 election was stolen from Trump. Unlike hundreds of others, he says he never entered the building. Uh, I remember calling my mom, who's a Salvadorian immigrant, and basically asking her, like, isn't this why you left that country to come to this country? And she was like, of course, like, this isn't supposed to happen in the United States of America. Young Democrat Manuel Galdamez is working alongside a young Republican, joining forces to help recall Fincham. We have a ton of people who need help, need laws passed, and he's out there focusing on conspiracy theories, which is just honestly just disgusting. But Fincham is undeterred. He's now running to become Arizona's top election official, the Secretary of State. Some voters are all for it. The term conspiracy theory is used to uh, ridicule some good ideas. Others dead set against it. Somebody like Representative Mark Fincham being in charge of elections, holding uh, a seat like Secretary of State is one of the most dangerous things that could happen to democracy. We wanted to give Fincham a chance to explain his beliefs, but our calls and emails weren't returned, so we waited outside the State House. Mr. Fincham, can you tell me a little bit about whether or not you believe in QAnon conspiracy theories, sir? Day one, he dodged us. Day two, we waited for 12 hours. He's one of the last cars in the parking lot now. The security for the legislature is now driving Fincham's car away. 2,000 miles away in the small Michigan town of Grand Blank, a first-time school board member is under fire for social media posts saying things like, QAnon confirmed by Trump, and they can delete our social media, but they'll never break our spirit or stop what is coming. God wins. Posted over a flaming Q with we the people are pissed off emblazoned over it. I think she was elected because she refused to 
uh, genuinely expose what she believes in. As a high school student and first time voter, Lucas Hartwell did his homework and discovered Amy Fashionello's now deleted post. If we cannot have an education system that is run by people who care about the truth, what is education? It's hard to follow what she really does believe. It's hard to separate truth from fiction. <laughs> He and others want her to resign, but some of his high school friends and their parents support her 100%. She's a conservative, so they're attacking her. You think this is purely along political lines, yes. not have anything to do with QAnon? Exactly. Well, I think personally, QAnon, parts of it are real. I mean, people say it's just a conspiracy, but some of it's pretty real. Some of it's ridiculous, obviously, but... Mo I think I think that is a real thing that we should be concerned about. One of the things is the pedophilia. They're saying ch children are being. Do you believe that? I yes, I do. I believe that there are some. I think there's some pedophilia going on back there, down there. We wanted to ask Fashionella what she believed. She did not respond to our request for an interview, but she was at the school board meeting. Do you believe in the QAnon theories that you've posted? No, all I've posted, I've posted where we go, when we go, all. Basically, they're. Uh, complaining about a uh, false narrative, and I think it's the false narrative to try to cancel Trump supporters. You, you posted some other things that you have the big Q that was burning on fire and it says we are pissed. Was that something that you believed in when you posted it? I don't even remember that tweet. There, there are several others, and there's also things about science that you don't believe in human caused climate change. Is that also true? I, I believe that science is a method and it's not a belief system and that this uh, adherence that you have to believe scientists is more of like a religious cult. You don't mask the healthy, you mask the sick. In Huntington Beach, California, it is the science surrounding COVID that has been called a conspiracy by the man elected mayor pro tem. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Are you thinking that COVID-19 was a little bit of a conspiracy theory? Oh, That's former UFC champion Tito Ortiz. A Trump supporter, Ortiz is like many of the candidates we've followed, getting widespread support for being a political disruptor. He seemed to me to be somebody who I thought um, might mix things up for us and change things around. I knew that he was a conservative voice, and I prefer that personally. I'm not wearing a mask. He is mixing things up by spending lots of time spewing and posting conspiracy theories. Say this right, pandemic or pandemic. <laughs> and less time dealing in policy and council business, his critics, both Democrat and Republican, say. Well, the first day when he was sworn in, um, he referred to the pandemic as a plandemic. And that sort of set the tone. Plandemic, the conspiracy theory circulating that the government planned the current pandemic. He also refused to wear a mask at council meetings at the height of the deadly pandemic in California. Nor did he want his children to wear masks to school. The boys are not going to be wearing their masks today. And let's see what they say. He started pushing conspiracies. I mean, really outlandish kind of accusations um, that, you know, kids were being uh, abused by our public school system just because we were mandating that kids wear masks in school to attend school. It all came to a head just this week at the first in-person council meeting since January. From day one, I was sworn in and I was met with hostility and judgment. After just five months on the city council, Tito Ortiz resigned effective immediately. As of recent, the attacks against me have moved into all of my family. I now feel for their safety is in danger. To put it simply, this job is a work for me. And we tried to talk to Tito Ortiz, both via email, he refused, then after that city council meeting. And we tried to ask him about his QAnon conspiracy theories and also about the safety issue, because we should mention, Anderson, that it was him and his girlfriend who posted full face their children on social media forcing them into the middle of this debate, sending them to school without masks during the mask mandate, during some of the times when, honestly, the whole state was suffering, dealing with high deaths from COVID. He had nothing to say. Anderson. Sarah Seidner, I appreciate the report. Thank you.